All right. Next day, just paint time after kids are in bed. So, good news is overnight, this down here has re-glued itself, and I'm pretty sure it's because I threw all that wash on it. And when I did that, it loosened the glue, and the glue settled back down, and then uh, flattened out and re-adhered. So I don't know exactly what. Probably just a really, really thick layer of glue when I did that, and. And kind of separating up as it dried, but a little wash back on it, let that resettle. So a couple of things I wanted to do first, and then I can start adding glows to the thing. Um, first, I wanted to trim out Scar's cloak a little in gold, because uh, I think that would look really cool, and it's kind of got a bit of a texture um, right along here along the edge on both sides and then uh, there's a couple of barnacles and starfish around the outside that I just wanted to get first and then uh, that'll be good so I don't normally paint straight out of the pot for these uh, liquid silvers and liquid golds but uh, I'm not planning on having it open for very long because I'm just doing a little tiny bit of detail so today I will the other downside is that the particulate settles in these really fast when you're done shaking. So you really only have a minute or two before none of it is at the top. So I'll have to go kind of quick. stuff works extremely well. To coat. Already got one side done. Just touch the paint. And the other side done. So now she's got gold on her cloak. If I was crazy and trying to do some kind of like super high quality display piece, maybe I'd try to do some kind of freehand on there with swirls or whatever, whatever scar might have, but not right now. I'm happy just to have that. So then on top of that, I'll put a Thonian Cam Shade dims down the gold, makes it look older. Put the alcohol away. Get my brush for water. And basically just put a little bit of this down on there to dull it down and get in those crevices. Give it some shadow. Got a little heavy with the gold, but this kind of pools around where it pooled and covers up the areas where it's sunk in. So now her cloak's got a little bit of gold trim on it. Yay! All right. Let's get that detail. I see a couple of other little tiny spots where there's silver down. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of gray. It's not gonna match perfectly, but since I'm just dabbing it on little tiny spots, it'll be a lot less visible than uh, where the silver splattered. So there's one kind of back there, the deck. Touch that. And one between her legs here. I'm trying to get without getting it on her. Touch 
like that. One by her foot here. Probably splattered on while I was painting the bottoms of their feet. Everything else is so small that I really can't spot it. I guess there's a little spot there. There, there, there. I think that's about it. And then uh, the only other thing I wanted to do on the surface of the boat there was kind of accentuate the pieces they're standing on a little. So there I'll just take a little bit of my rainy gray. Rainy gray. Mix up a tiny little bit of my amber gold. Kind of make it look like it's older. I thin that down pretty good. I want to layer this on. I don't want to have to come back with a wash. I want to be done. So my palette color, like that. Just kind of like a very dirty tan. Make sure most of the paint is off my brush because I don't want to hit it too hard. And then I'll just kind of give this a little bit of accentuate on the raised areas so that people see it. Blended in a little too much with the deck for my liking when I was looking at the thing. A little piece there, a little piece between her legs over here. And then I've gotten those kind of, so they'll stand out just a little bit. And the last thing I want to do before adding glows is paint some of the barnacles and starfish that are on the outside. Barnacles are just gray from my research. Starfish can be any of a million colors, but I'm gonna kind of go traditional, I decided, and if I don't like it, I'll paint over it later. It's not really where the glow is, and I think having like a yellowish brown starfish is gonna really contrast nicely with uh, the purple that's gonna be right next to it. Because this whole soul wave here is gonna be just purple glows, and you got the starfish right next to it. It's not really where the glow would hit it, so it's not going to be part of the OSL or the lighting. So I'm just going to give it a base coat here of my leather brown. It's going to need one more coat. Went on pretty well. While that dries. I'm going to get some of my rainy and misty grays. I'll just paint the barnacles neutral gray. It's almost going to make them look a little cool because of all the warmth that I added to the rest of the grays on the ship. So just plain old rainy gray. A little thicker than normal. Not super thick, but enough. And I'll just start tagging all these barnacles. Being very careful not to get it on the ship itself, because that I don't want to touch up. A couple over here. The brush is separating like mad. I may have to put this into a reclaimer. Luckily, I don't need a lot of detail work with that puppy right now. All right, other side. Let me look at that. There's some over here.
Cluster of three and a cluster of four. If anyone has any comments, make sure you click through where I shared it to various groups into the actual video. Ask there, I should be able to see it on the stream and answer. Or respond to comments, questions. All right, that's a good first coat. I just didn't bother going too deep into the crevices and that way you've got the kind of the dark base coat anyhow. Starfish with another layer. My leather brown. This is all detailed to mold it in. You don't have to glue these on at all. See, I hit the ship just a little bit. So before that paint sets, clean off my brush. Use my clean water. Not too much water. Just pick that back up. Next color for the barnacles, little misty gray. Just use neutrals. They looked really, really neutral gray in my uh, research photographs. I'm sure someone out there has more research or experience with barnacles. But I live in a landlocked state except for uh, the lake, which you don't get barnacles. Yeah, we'll just highlight these up. And then I'll probably call that a day on those. Just gonna hit the edges. And again, my target for this is kind of high tabletop, not display competition quality. That's where I go with most of my stuff. I think if I ever tried to paint a competition piece, it would take me the whole year. Nothing else. Spend all my hobby time doing that. Starfish. Now we're going to put on a little bit of this uh, sunlight yellow. Anytime I do yellows on my black, I always put my browns first. Trying to put yellow on black and have it go up to that is pretty nuts. It's already pretty thin out of the bottle. Bit on there. And then the last highlight on that will be lemon yellow. We'll just 
just get the final highlight on that, and then I won't need to wash that either. This one's pretty bright of a yellow. Just gonna speckle it in there just a little bit. Pretty good starfish. Happy with that. All right, on to glows. Normally, when I do glows, I go straight with magenta and then mix in whites and just do mixes from the magenta up to the white. In this case, this is such a large area, I'm actually gonna base with the purple itself. This is a different purple than I used on Scar's Cloak. This is a Vallejo purple. The color is actually just purple. And uh, for Scar's Cloak, I was using these Reapers, which are more of a muted kind of, you know, um, more of a lavender base. Whereas now for glows, I'm gonna come up through a magenta. So my initials, I'm gonna go on fairly thick compared to later. We can just start putting the purple for a base coat all over this thing. And I'll do the decision on what's going to actually glow in a bit here. But basically this is going to carry up onto areas that glow that are almost black or dark. And that way I'll have this purple be the base for that. And then I can bring it up through magenta. I won't bring the reflected glows up to white, but the wave itself will have white on its tips on everything. No matter how much you paint something white, if light can't get to it, it won't glow, but there's really nothing you can do about that short of actually adding lights in the model. to worry too much about getting a little bit on the boat in areas that it would hit anyway because it's going to get them. So probably take two coats. I know uh, the way some people do glows is they start with a bright bright white and they put successive washes in more outer areas. I prefer starting dark and then building up to the white on the lightest areas. It's easier for me to paint those center pieces than to try to paint around the center pieces. Some of this will be easier to get from the other angle, but I think most of it I'm gonna have to hit from here.
What you don't want to do is put this purple for glows over areas that are brighter. So, if, for example, if that starfish were trying to glow, if I put purple down, it would actually be darker over the yellow. And that's like the cardinal sin of glowing in OSL. You don't want to have any area that you're glowing on be lighter, or sorry, darker than the glow, because light doesn't make things dark. It lightens it up and then it tints it. So you wanted to, if I was going to do that starfish, I'd probably use only a, a pink and kind of glaze over it with that, a very light color, almost white. Kind of see into there and see where I met my paint from the other side. skulls act as a base don't want their eyes too dark definitely don't want to leave any of the black brush every now and then so I don't get too much paint going up into that ferro I'm drying. Sure, yeah, um, I asked to show the whole thing for the moment. Uh, pretty much got the Cetixis all done, painted. Ship's all done, painted. Scar is all done, painted. Um, Move the camera because it's harder to set. But the ship's pretty much done. So at this point, all I'm going to be doing is adding my glows. If I see any spots I need to touch up, I will. But and then I do my base with my arc marks. Let's paint these runes on. Um, I need to make that soul wave glow. I got to make all these individual windows glow. I was going to have glows down in here. Um, probably make their eyes glow because I don't like painting pupils. <laughs> So it's kind of an easy way to make the eyes look good without having to worry about that. Um, make all these windows in the back glow, the big window in the back glow, and then the little window in the front of the cab in the middle of the door. Um, it's going to be a lot of little fiddly work, and it goes a lot faster after the base coats are done like anything else. But for now... You're not going to be able to see up in here real well, I don't think. Ooh, that was bad. You know what? No, that's not bad. I just painted the mast with the purple, but uh, I'm not too worried about that because that thing's going to be glowing the hell out of it anyway. So you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and hit that now. The whole inside of this is going to be glowing because if you think about that giant soul wave crashing up through it, if that's glowing and down here is very dark, it's basically going to be a, a very shades of purple down here and pink but i'm going to start with the soul wave and paint that and then come back later to add the glows except for the mast apparently which is fine i just won't paint the um higher colors on that mast until uh i get the soul wave done and then just put some magenta and lighter pinks on that because it's really close to where all these waves are going to be glowing the brightest
it's more purple. It's just thinning too much. purple in one model. It's amazing how much adding more paint to your palette will suddenly make the paint cover better. I'm invariably going to miss some spots, but hopefully I'll be able to catch it as I come back. So again, I splashed a little on the deck there, but actually I'm going to take that off because that might stay the dark color. I don't see maybe that wave getting up in there. So I'll clear off my brush, put some clean water on it, scrub that off. I'm gonna be careful holding it. I started holding it like this, and I almost heard some crackling, almost like the glue's weakening where this is being glued down. That I don't want. Playing with it, and also the whole thing just falls right off. That's gonna be bad. I'm gonna do a second coat. Don't bother with that now. Get your first coat down, dude. Very ADHD painter. Oh look, I gotta paint that. Right down here where there's no light for the camera to see. It's awesome. Excellent. Entertaining video right there. kind of comes off this base purple kind of looks like taffy grape flavored taffy especially on all this long pulled out smooth sculpted area it does dry a little darker as you can see over there But this will be a good base color. I When I do glows, I've tried doing them with washes and then rehighlighting it back up and it just never really gets too dark. So I need to do this without a wash, which if you've been listening to the rest of this series is how I paint, I wash. And that's what makes things look nice to me. So having to do it without that wash is kind of really stepping outside my normal comfort zone, but we do what we must because we can. Because we can.
Thank you. Painted that earlier in the thing. Starfish. Got a compliment for those of you who aren't looking at the live comments. It's just leather brown, um, sunlight yellow, and lemon yellow, all from Reaper. No washes. All right, there's a little bit more in there. It's going to be hard to hit. I'm the one who chose to put it together before uh, painting. So now I live with the consequence. All right, so that's going to need a second coat. Meanwhile, before I forget, I was also going to paint their <laughs> lips in this. So I got my tiny, teeny, tiny brush. This is a 6-0. Oh, that's the brush head. You can't even see it because the camera won't focus on it. That's what I use for my detail work. Some people can use a big old, like, number two with a fine point. Um, I don't. I've tried. There's just too much room for error. So all I'm going to do right now is just touch the lips. A little bit of purple lipstick. You don't want to get too big. End up looking like a clown. Don't want that. is when I use my magenta I'll come back and try to put just a little on the top lip maybe on the lower if I feel brave Ooh, scar I can't forget scar but that uh will make it look less like you just accidentally blotched some purple on their lips and more like it was kind of meant to be there and all it takes is like a dot too much on there so once again we'll use the same technique try to pull a little bit of it off camera here just because I can't get to that lip. So sorry, I'm going to have to paint her off camera real quick. I cannot get to her and have her show well on camera. Not happy with Scar's face. Take that purple one back off. <sighs> Scar's face. Now I'm going to put some purple back on her lips and try to do a better job of not making her look like a clown. <laughs> the purple to it, it leeches all around her lips. I am cleaning up Scar's face off camera at the moment in case anyone is wondering. Just gotta get it dry to like add purple on the lips that I just did on the Stixis without it going all over, which is what just happened. There we go. Much better. 
lips. We'll do the eyes when we do the rest of the glows. I don't want to use purple on them. Gloves look like they have eyeshadow. I can't do that and then make it look any good. All right, so next, I got the base coat on all the purple wave for the first coat. I'm gonna need to do second coat, but while that's drying, because I can still see it wet, I might as well put some of the purple base down in other areas I'm gonna make grow. Like these ports here. Bridge and stuff. All right, get some more purple. We coat the entire inside, including the walls. Things glowing, not just the source. That light wouldn't really spill down anywhere either because this curves down. Cat up on the counter where it should not be. Mistake right there. A little bit more. Clean it up. Just a little bit of water. And pick up the water that I left. I'm wiping my brush off. And then you pick that up. Okay. Now the windows. I have to be very careful when I do the windows because I don't want to get it on the metal. So I need to be careful to just try to fill in the outsides of the back areas here. fun thing is going to be doing this for each individual layer. I don't mind getting a little bit on the outside of this, inside of this window trim area, but I'm trying to keep it off of my metal so I want that to stay really dark and silver rusty look This is just too fine to detail work for that brush. I'm gonna switch over to like a 3.0. And get in there better without worrying about it splashing all over. I was considering doing these windows in like a yellowish orange kind of lantern glow. But I decided, nah, be coherent. 
stick through the whole thing with my purple. I don't mind getting up on the sides of the uh, detail. I just don't want to get on the face of it. Again, I don't mind getting it up on the edges here. It's all going to glow anyway. All the purple laid down first. Sometimes I might jump straight to the magenta, especially with these smaller areas, but then I gotta do multiple layers, like three or four of the magenta. So using the purple should cut that down to maybe two of the purple, but this is coating pretty well. So I'm keeping it kind of thick and getting in there, there's no detail to cover up. hold this thing. You can see it's covering up all the metal that got down in there that I splashed. Wasn't too careful. Didn't need to be knew it was going to get covered up anyway by this purple. Honestly, if the purple creeps onto the metal just a little bit, I'm not even going to worry about it. Maybe the light might not really do that, but it might bounce up on the edge and then reflect down onto the metal. And it's so dark of a metal that it would probably pick that up in his ambient light anyway. 
but I am going to do my best to keep off of them just to keep them as dark as possible. I'll be really a lot more careful once I start going into the magentas and pinks and white. The good news is this window means I'm halfway there. Soft brush, add a little water, so it's got sludge thick. Going to go on a little thick, it's not super thick. So I'll detail I can obscure in these large flat areas. But you can see how it covers up all that extra metallic bronze and silver that got on there. Neatens that right up. A little too much on the brush. Rather than cleaning it off on a paper towel, just clean it off on a large area and you can paint. And I can spread it around.
So if I need to remind you on some of that. Just seeing the difference in color there is the wet versus the dry. Not necessarily coats or how well it coats. Considering at one point having all these individual things down here glow, I'm not sold on that yet. I'll look at it when I'm done, and if I want to, I'll come back and hit those things. chunk of resin or whatever it weighs. Mm -hmm. 
Gosh, it's losing its tip. Let's get off. If anyone has any questions, feel free to click through, make sure you're on the stream, not where I'm shared. Go ahead and ask there, and I can answer it while I'm painting. I do see questions as I go. Show your mats. No. Let's get this tour thing. Okay. 
bigger brush for the other port area that goes down. Tip this back up a little. Alright, so it's a good base coat for most of my glows. And honestly, that covered pretty well. I think I'm just going to give it a, a quick once over. It's purple again. And the soul wave. Try to make sure that I hit everything that I possibly can. You can see some spots of bare resin. The primer didn't get too up in there. I'll just coat that too. Not too worried about the primer not hitting it. Because it won't be rubbing up against anything to rub off the paint. because this is thin and then I can spread it all around. This is just the second coat of my purple. My base coat color. First coat covered fairly well, but I know there's spots that I'm going to have missed, and it's better just kind of go over the whole thing again anyway.
these little faces. They're gonna be fun to make glow. Get that mask again. I'm not gonna try to separate it from the rest of the faces at this point. I just won't highlight it up like them. Just some magenta on it, maybe a little bit of pink, but certainly not like these other faces will be. And no matter how much you paint stuff down there, the light's never gonna hit it. So I'm gonna paint it up to a white, but the effect will only be as good as the light that can get on this model. Honestly, I'm coming up on quitting time anyhow. So, get the purple's base coated. I don't know if it'll lighten up anymore. I'll try to get the light to shine down in there a bit. The face is all base coated. Got my window base coated there. All the windows around the outside. Soul wave, all the details covered up on the bolt that I wanted to hit. And next time I can come in and start highlighting up the glow on the soul wave and the windows with the magenta and then the pink that I mixed from the magenta and the white. And then a lighter pink for a little more white and then white on the tips. I usually do the magenta, the white, and two gradients of pink in between two mixes. So I'll probably start on that tomorrow. See y'all later.